Welcome to this educational program. This module discusses vasectomy reversal, how it works, expected outcomes, and potential surgical risks. This information is taken from a recent review of the medical literature and attempts to be as transparent and comprehensive as possible. However, it may not necessarily reflect the experience of your healthcare provider or the specifics of your situation. This program is strictly informational in nature and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendation. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or to skip through them in any order you wish. Vasectomy is the most common surgical procedure performed for sterilization as part of family planning. Many men, of course, may undergo life changes later on or wish to father children again after having had a vasectomy previously. A vasectomy reversal can restore fertility in men who have undergone the vasectomy procedure and is most often their best option. Between 1 and 10 percent of men in North America who have had a vasectomy will choose to undergo a reversal. Before describing the reversal procedure, let us first briefly review the male anatomy and sperm transport. Sperm is made in the testicles, or testes, which sit in the sac of skin called the scrotum. This figure shows the path of sperm as it leaves the testicles, travels through a coiled tube called the epididymis, then enters the vas deferens, also simply called the vas. The vas leaves the scrotum and travels through the groin, then down into the pelvis beside the bladder to enter the prostate, where it joins the ejaculatory ducts. The vasectomy procedure usually involves tying or clipping a small section of the vas just above the testicle, then removing the segment in between. The vasectomy reversal procedure involves a microsurgical technique that takes the cut ends of the vas deferens and reconnects them, allowing the small tubes to carry sperm from the testicles and into the ejaculatory system. The most common vasectomy reversal procedure is the vasovasostomy, whereby the cut ends of the vas deferens are joined back together to recreate an open channel. Sometimes after a vasectomy, the first part of the vas or the epididymis can become blocked. In this case, reconnecting the vas deferens only would not restore an open channel, so the vas has to be connected further back at the epididymis. This procedure is called a vasoepididymostomy. If you are thinking about a vasectomy reversal, there are three main considerations to explore first with both your partner and your doctor. Of utmost importance, of course, is to be absolutely sure of your desire to father more children. Once this decision is firm, then the next question is simply, what is the best way for me to do so? The key steps in this decision are to evaluate the likelihood of success of the various approaches and then to factor in the costs involved. For vasectomy reversal, Success of pregnancy will be determined by several other factors, including the length of time since the vasectomy, the age and fertility of the female partner, the age and previous fertility of the male partner, the method of vasectomy, your surgeon's experience, and the technique used to perform the vasectomy reversal. The duration of time that has passed following vasectomy is a key factor in determining success. As the years go by, the testicles will produce less sperm, and it may be of lesser quality, with less ability to fertilize the egg. Anti-sperm antibodies may also develop, which can also impede the sperm's ability to fertilize. Finally, with time, blockage of the epididymis and or rupture of the tubules in the epididymis may occur, which can make the reversal more challenging and less effective. This table outlines the importance of time following vasectomy. With less than three years passed since vasectomy, technical success, meaning the ability to reconnect the tubes and have sperm present in the semen, can be as high as 97% in the most experienced hands. And the pregnancy rate can be as high as 76%. These numbers drop with time, to the point where at 15 years, sperm are present in the semen only 71% of the time, and the pregnancy rate falls to about 30 percent. Graphically, this slide shows how the chance of successful reversal 
does decrease as the years go by after vasectomy. The evaluation for vasectomy reversal begins with an interview with your urologist, who will ask questions about the time of vasectomy, the details of the procedure, and any complications that may have occurred. You will also be asked about your general health and fertility, as well as the health and fertility of your partner. A physical examination will then be performed to assess your fitness for anesthesia, the health of the testes, the presence of scar tissue called a sperm granuloma, and the presence of any varicoceles or hernias. The procedure itself is performed on an outpatient basis, meaning that you do not need to be admitted to the hospital overnight. This procedure can be done in a hospital or a surgery center. Unlike a vasectomy procedure, vasectomy reversal is usually performed using a general or regional anesthesia. Vasectomy reversals are performed with the assistance of a microscope to carefully place the sutures using microsurgical technique. They typically take anywhere from 90 minutes to 4 hours, depending on the surgeon and the technique used. Do not eat or drink anything 12 hours prior to surgery. Do not take anything by mouth for 12 hours prior to surgery. Furthermore, avoid taking aspirin for 5 to 7 days prior to surgery, as this can increase the chance of bleeding afterwards. Prior to the procedure, if possible, you should shave the scrotum. If you are not comfortable with this, that is fine, but your doctor may need to do this for you prior to the procedure. It is suggested that you bring a clean pair of cotton jockey-style briefs or an athletic supporter with you to help support the scrotum after surgery, as this will help to lessen discomfort after the procedure. You should have a ride home available following surgery. Once you are under the anesthesia, your urologist will make small cuts or incisions on each side of your scrotum. Occasionally, larger incisions are required, extending up toward your groin or down lower to either free up the vas more or to bring the testicle right out into the operating field. A surgical operating microscope is then used to isolate the vasectomy site, and each end is opened up and probed with a small instrument or fluid. Patency or openness of the channel is confirmed in this way. Patency is further confirmed by taking a sample of fluid from the tube and checking for sperm under another microscope. The presence of sperm in the fluid indicates that there is no obstruction between the testicle and the location in the tube where the fluid was taken. Therefore, the passage can be re-established by reconnecting the ends of the vas. This is called a vasovasostomy. If there is no fluid or obstruction is otherwise found, then the vas may have to be cut further back toward the testicle until an open channel is found. This process may carry all the way back to the epididymis, thus necessitating a vasoepididymostomy. There are two widely used techniques for vasectomy reversal, the modified one-layer and the two-layer vasovasostomy. Some surgeons may perform a modified one-layer closure without an operating microscope, though most do use one. In the modified one-layer technique, a series of tiny stitches are placed from the exterior into the central canal of the vas deferens to join the ends. Once the full set is tied, a second set that only pierces the outer thicker portion of the vas deferens will be placed in between each opposite pair of full thickness stitches. In the two-layer technique, six to eight tiny stitches are placed first to join only the edges of the inner lining of the vas. Another series of stitches, which is the second layer, is then used to connect the outer portions of the two cut ends of the vas. As mentioned, sometimes vasoepididymostomy is required. The opening of the epididymis tubules is small, so the technique is more challenging, and the overall success is not as good as with standard vasovasostomy. Following surgery, your doctor will outline your postoperative care. It is often recommended that you cover the wounds with polysporin or a similar product a couple times a day and that you avoid bathing for about 48 hours. If you experience discomfort after the procedure, it is best to take an over-the-counter painkiller such as acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Your doctor may prescribe you something stronger than this. It is important that you rest for 48 hours to avoid straining the area and causing bleeding or pain. 
It is also helpful when you first get home to gently apply an ice pack, such as a frozen bag of peas, to the scrotum, but do not leave it on the area for more than 20 minutes at a time, and do this only once per hour as necessary. Early on, if you develop sudden swelling of the scrotum or bleeding into it, call your doctor. You should avoid heavy lifting and sexual activity for the first week following the procedure, or as recommended by your doctor. It is normal following vasectomy to have some mild discomfort in the scrotum and some bruising and swelling of the skin. A slight bit of blood from the wound is also within normal. In general, the risk of complications following vasectomy reversal is quite low. Having said this, it is a surgical procedure and complications can develop. Things to consider or watch for include a collection of sperm or sperm granuloma that may cause pain or swelling, a possible infection that may require antibiotics or rarely hospitalization, and a collection of blood in the scrotum, also known as a hematoma. After surgery, try to simply relax and enjoy life. It may take up to three to six months for normal sperm production to resume. Some doctors will have you check sperm counts on a regular schedule, while others may not. Have your sperm counts checked as instructed. It should be pointed out that even with a successful reversal and good sperm counts, it may take quite a while to achieve pregnancy. In fact, the average time to pregnancy is about 12 months. Obviously, you may be concerned about what to do in the case of an unsuccessful reversal. In this case, your doctor might discuss several options with you, including a repeat reversal, assisted reproduction techniques, and adoption. Repeat reversals can be successful, and some studies show only a slight reduction in the patency and pregnancy rates in these situations. The most common assisted reproduction techniques to explore include in vitro fertilization, or IVF, and intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI. Finally, of course, adoption is a consideration for some couples. In assisted reproduction techniques, sperm is retrieved from the male partner, usually by microscopic aspiration or biopsy of the testicle. It is then processed in the lab. Drugs are given to the female partner to enhance egg production. Then at the right time, eggs are retrieved from her. Fertilization is then accomplished depending on the technique, and this is discussed in the next slide. Following fertilization, the egg is replaced back into the woman's uterus or womb. In IVF, fertilization is accomplished by incubating the egg with sperm in a culture dish. This technique relies on good quality sperm capable of penetrating the egg and fertilizing it on their own. In ICSI, normal sperm function is not required as an individual sperm is injected directly into the egg under a microscope. While these techniques are suitable and successful for many couples, there are some disadvantages with them. Compared to a successful vasectomy reversal, pregnancy rates are lower with ICSI, for example, achieving success in about 18% per cycle. Obviously, it is a less natural method of conception than a successful reversal, and there is also a greater chance of multiple births, such as twins or triplets. For the female partner, IVF and ICSI do involve invasive procedures, numerous ultrasounds, and the use of fertility drugs. Finally, the cost needs to be taken into consideration. Compared to a successful reversal, it probably costs about three times more to achieve pregnancy with these methods. Taking all of this into consideration then, vasectomy reversal is the best option to restore fertility in most men who have previously had a vasectomy. It provides good results and allows couples to conceive naturally. It is also the most economical. Assisted reproductive techniques might be considered when the chance of successful reversal is lower such as with a very long duration from vasectomy, or if there are other fertility issues at play. In summary, vasectomy reversal is a microsurgical procedure to rejoin the cut ends of the sperm duct. It is typically done under general anesthesia, and recovery is usually quite simple. Success of the procedure varies mostly with time from vasectomy and the fertility status of each partner. 
and excellent success rates can be achieved. It is usually the best first option for restoring natural fertility following previous vasectomy. These resources may help you find further information or support about your condition. This is just a sample of modern references discussing vasectomy reversal, available at your local medical library. We hope that this presentation has furthered your understanding of the vasectomy reversal procedure. We wish you the best for the future and thank you once again for viewing this educational program.